Good evening. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Boys and girls, give yourselves a round of applause. Wee. It's lovely to see so many of you here at the Salt Church annual Carol Christmas concert. And I hope you're looking forward to it. Yes? Yes. Just a few notices before we start. Number one, it might be an idea to turn off your mobile phone or put it on, on the thing uh, so it doesn't disturb the proceedings. Um, and also, just a couple of things. The way you came in is the way we will all go out at the end of the evening. Um, that is the uh, entrance and the exit. The toilets uh, are on my left, on your right. Um, so if anybody needs to take um, um, a break, then please do so. Um, and as we go through the carol service, uh, we will be uh, standing for the carols, but you may well want to remain seated. Do you know, we are incredibly um, easy going here at Salt Church. However you feel comfortable um, in singing the carols, then uh, please do. You can stand uh, with us as we're standing and singing, or you can remain seated. Well, that's up to you for your own comfort. Also, at the end of the evening, uh, when the carol service has finished, it takes about an hour, uh, we will be serving teas and coffees and mince pies. So please do stay and talk to one another and join in in uh, the festivities after the carol service. Um, we're going to be singing uh, lots of things. I'm sure most of us here know the Christmas story, and it would be uh, appropriate for me to open our proceedings with a short prayer. So let us pray. Father in heaven, Lord, we are so thankful that we can be here this evening to remind ourselves of the Christmas story. Father, as the words from the Bible are read out, and as the carols are being sung, I just pray, O oh God, that you would open our hearts to receive your word, that we will understand it and respond to it. We thank you that uh, you take delight in singing, and I know that you also are looking forward to joining us because you are here by the power of your spirit as we sing praises to the Lord Jesus Christ. And everyone in the room said, Amen. Amen. So without further ado, I'm going to hand over to our master of ceremonies, Marcia, who's going to help us um, um, along our way. Well, it might be a video first. You can't get the passes nowadays. <laughs> Just sit quietly. It will run itself.
Good evening, everybody. The first reading is from Luke 1, verses 26 to 35. God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a village in Galilee, to a virgin named Mary. She was engaged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of King David. Gabriel appeared to her and said, Greetings, favored woman. The Lord is with you. Confused and disturbed, Mary tried to think what the angel could mean. Don't be afraid, Mary, the angel told her, for you have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be very great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor, David, and he will reign over Israel forever. His kingdom will never end. Mary asked the angel, but how can this happen? I am a virgin. The angel replied, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the baby to be born will be holy and he will be called the Son of God. Our next carol is, O Come All Ye Faithful.
next reading is from Luke 2, verses 1 to 7. At that time, the Roman Emperor Augustus decreed that a census should be taken throughout the Roman Empire. This was the first census taken when Quirinius was governor of Syria. All returned to their own ancestral towns to register for this census. And because Joseph was a descendant of King David, he had to go to Bethlehem in Judea, David's ancient home. He traveled there from the village of Nazareth in Galilee. He took with him Mary, to whom he was engaged, who was now expecting a child. And while they were there, the time came for her baby to be born. She gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him snugly in strips of cloth and laid him in a manger, because there was no lodging available for them. Our next carol is One in a Royal, Once in a Royal David City. standing if you are standing. But now we're going to sing Silent Night.
Our next reading is from Luke 2, verses 8 to 20. That night there were shepherds staying in the fields nearby, guarding their flocks of sheep. Suddenly an angel of the Lord appeared among them, and the radiance of the Lord's glory surrounded them. They were terrified, but the angel reassured them. Don't be afraid, he said. I bring you good news that will bring great joy to all people. The Saviour, yes, the Messiah, the Lord, has been born today in Bethlehem, the city of David. And you will recognize him by this sign. You will find a baby wrapped snugly in strips of cloth, lying in a manger. Suddenly, the angel was joined by a vast host of others, the armies of heaven, praising God and saying, Glory to God in highest heaven and peace on earth to those with whom God is pleased. When the angels had returned to heaven, the shepherds said to each other, Let's go to Bethlehem. Let's see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. They hurried to the village and found Mary and Joseph, and there was the baby, lying in the manger. After seeing him, the shepherds told everyone what had happened and what the angel had said to them about this child. All who heard the shepherd's story were astonished, but Mary kept all these things in her heart and thought about them often. The shepherds went back to their flocks, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen. It was just as the angel had told them. And now we're going to sing Hark the Herald Angels Sing, followed by Ding Dong Merrily on High. <laughs>
And of, and of course, that's followed by Ding Dong, Where Are They On High? The next reading is from Matthew 2, verses 1 to 11. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Messiah was to be born. In Bethlehem in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people, Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the child, and as soon as you find him, report to me so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way, and the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed, on coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Now our next carol, and you, you may feel like dancing to this, feel free, is the Calypso Carol.
The Christmas story, Jesus, the reason for the season. Jesus, God's only son, who he sent to the world to pay the price for our sins, that we might have everlasting life. This is the good news. This is the glad tidings of great joy for all people. Now we still have a few carols left. Our next carol is O Holy Night. entering into these amazing carols, very moving indeed, fall on your knees while I might not be able to get back up. 
but it really touches the soul, doesn't it? And I'm just going to talk for a very brief few minutes uh, what I believe uh, God wanted me to say in simplicity this evening. And it goes a bit like this. If my clicker's going to work, and my clicker isn't working. There's always a technical hitch. We're going. Hallelujah. Can you see the time is ticking? Time is a wonderful thing. We live in the now of time. We cannot change it. We cannot predict it. Time ticks forward, always forward. We want to control it, but we can't. We want to change the past, but we can't. We want to know the future, but we don't. Time is the only thing we have or don't have. What is eternity? Eternity is time without end, and we call it infinity. To infinity and beyond, cries Buzz Lightyear. Eternity is a sense of timelessness. One thing for sure, it lasts a very long, long time. We understand the concept, an eternity ring, a circle with no beginning or end, a line that keeps on going in both directions, never ending, a figure eight on its side, the mathematical symbol of eternity. But more importantly, Eternity is defined as without end of existence. And I believe that the Bible contests that we are created as eternal beings. Our bodies decay, but our soul and our spirit are eternal. SOS, save our souls. You may be surprised that the Bible speaks much about time and eternity. The opening just 10 words of the Bible describe God creating time, space, and matter. In the beginning, time, God created the heavens, space, and the earth, matter. This is profoundly true, and all science is based on this foundation. But God got there first and wrote it over 4,000 years ago. And this is the only, the first 10 words of the Bible. What else can the Bible tell us? Well, Christmas is about time. God's time. God's decreed time. We are told in the scriptures, when the set time had fully come, God sent his son, born of a woman, into the world. And the set time means that when all of earth's history that was necessary had been completed, Jesus Christ, son of God, came into the world. God is always on time. God never misses a nanosecond. And God is the one person who knows all of eternity, as he is eternal himself. God knows the times and the seasons of our lives. God knows the number of days and all the time that we have on earth. And God desires that we spend eternity with him. The issue is, as we've been singing in many a Christmas carol, is that the smallest thing that we do which is wrong separates us from God. We call it sin. None of us is perfect. No, not one. We need a saviour, and God knows that. A means to pay for our wrong. A means of forgiveness. A person who can reconcile us to God as our Heavenly Father. At Christmas time, we celebrate that God sent his son to be that person, to pay the price for our wrongdoing, for our sins. And Jesus showed his love for you and for me and for the whole world 
by willingly paying that price on the cross. He died so that we could live. He was innocent so that we, the guilty, could go free. The clock is ticking, tick tock. Time to make a decision, tick tock. Christmas is about God's timing, tick tock. Jesus Christ has come into the world to save those who would believe, tick tock. Let this Christmas be God's timing for you to say yes to Jesus. Tick tock. Amen. Amen. Our next carol is O Holy Night. Oh. Oh, I'm sorry. It's, yeah, it's joy to the world. I'm sorry about that. Coming to the end of our uh, festivities this evening. I do hope as you have listened and sung and seen the words and the videos and that you have gone through the Christmas story that it has reminded you of uh, many things about the story that is personal for you. I do hope that you've enjoyed being uh, here with us at Salt Church. It's been lovely to have everybody singing along and being here this evening. We come to the close. I'm going to close with a prayer, and then we're going to have one more song. But please do stay behind for the all-important hot drinks and mince pies. So let us pray. <laughs> Father in heaven, we thank you for sending Jesus Christ into the world that we have celebrated this evening. Father, it's cost you your son to bring us back to know you as our heavenly father. Father, we just pray in the mighty name of Jesus that as we meditate and think about this evening, Lord, that you would speak to our hearts in power. Lord, as we talk together with one another over teas, coffees, and mince pies, that we enjoy the fellowship that we have one with another. And Lord, we pray that you would send us out from here in the knowledge and love of the Lord Jesus Christ. 
that he died on a cross that we might live, that he's coming back again that we might be raised. And Lord, we just thank you for everything that you've done. And everyone said, Amen. Amen.